Good morning. Welcome to Pine Island United Methodist Church, where we exist to reach people with God's love, transform lives, and change the world. We are so happy that you're joining us this morning, whether you are here in person or whether you're joining us this morning online. This week on Friday, as a country, we celebrated Veterans Day, a day when we acknowledge and honor those who have or are serving our country in one of the branches of the military. Now, since 9-11, Veterans Day sometimes includes those in the police and fire departments who risk their lives to protect the public. Veterans Day is different from Memorial Day when we remember those who died in service to our country. At its core, this is a day to give attention to those who serve our country and believe in the protection of every person's freedom. So this morning, I would love for those of you who are veterans, including those in the police and fire departments, to stand so that we can honor you and thank you. Now I have a few announcements for us. Uh, First of all, the toy drive that is still taking place. The bin is out in the narthex. You can grab, it's a green half sheet of paper. It tells you the list of toys that are, um, that we're looking for. That is, we're partnering with the FISH organization, the Fellow Islanders Sending Help. It's a philanthropic organization on our island, and um, we are partnering with them to do that this year. So you can bring your new unwrapped toys between now and December 11th and drop those in the bin that's out in the narthex. It's wrapped in Christmas paper. You can't miss it. And then the distribution day will be Saturday, December 17th for that. Um, And we will need volunteers. We'll need volunteers the day before to do some sorting. We'll need volunteers the day of to help the families as they shop for Christmas presents for their kids. So if you have any time, either of those days or maybe both days, uh, please Contact the, you can contact the office to let us know, or if you have um, Karen Duran's information, you can contact her directly and let her know that you're available to help on that day. Um, if you know someone, or if you are someone who needs help with your own home, with clean out, with yard cleanup, whatever it is that you need, we have a sign up out in the narthex. Uh, Vicki Miller has been um, overseeing that, so you can sign your name there, give her your address or your friend's address, and a way to contact them so that um, we can reach out to them and find out what they need, and we can get some people to help out. We have some people that are here this week. And um, we're hoping we can get some other teams here as well. So we'll keep a list of those that need some help. A reminder that this Thursday, November 17th, at 6.15 p.m. here in the sanctuary, um, Garrett McIntyre will be here. He's an attorney in Fort Myers. He is a member of Cypress Lake United Methodist Church. And um, he will be here. He sees this as his ministry. Um, It will be a question and answer session. He'll also have a little presentation, but he'll talk through some things having to do with insurance and FEMA and um, So any questions that you have about that process, you can bring those and ask him, and he'll do his best to answer those for you. And that is free, um, and it's just, it's a time to come. It's for us, but it's also for the community. So if you have friends and neighbors that you know have some questions, bring them along with you Thursday evening. Next Sunday, immediately following service, we will have our Hanging of the Greens. I can't believe, next Sunday. We're going to decorate the sanctuary for Christmas. So if you uh, want to join us, stay after. We'll have some um, light refreshments, some, maybe a little light lunch, we might say, here after the service. And we'll just all join together and get out all the Christmas trees and poinsettias and play some Christmas music and get in the festive spirit this year. And speaking of that, um, if you have been part of the Food and Fellowship Committee, people who have been helping with the lunches that we were doing after church uh, or in any way part of that hospitality food ministry, will you please meet up with Mary Bousquet? She's right here. She's actually going to be praying for us later, so you'll get to see her beautiful face and know who she is if you don't remember. She's out there in the narthex. Meet up with her after service so that you guys can have a little meeting about next Sunday. And one last announcement. Our ushers have a little piece of paper they're going to bring around and make sure everybody gets it. This is a little survey, a one-question survey. Um, This year, 
Christmas happens to fall on a Sunday. So um, we are, I have a, the one question is, if we had something here in person at the church this year on that Sunday, would you attend? And that doesn't mean that it'll be a 10 o'clock service, a traditional service. It could be anything. We're just trying to gather some information. So um, if you would attend, you can mark yes. There's a place there for additional comments you can put in there. If a certain time of day is, would be better, um, you can just give me whatever information you think I might need to know about your yes or no answer. And then we'll get back with you on what we might do on Christmas Day. So I'll give you a few minutes to figure that, to fill that out. Carrie can play some Jeopardy music, maybe. <laughs> Once you have it filled out, just hang on to it. And then at the end of the service, um, you can hand it to one of the ushers at the door on your way out, and we'll collect those. And those will also go out on, um, in our newsletter this week. So if you're not here this morning, but you're watching online, you can fill that out for us and send it back to us. Let me pray for us as we begin today. God, thank you for this morning, for the sunshine outside, um, and for the opportunity that we have to come together and gather. Thank you for those in our congregation who stood this morning as veterans who have served our country and who have spent years of service so that we can live in a country where we have the freedom to come together and worship you and praise you. We know that you are here in our midst today. What we ask is that you speak to us and that we would listen. Open our eyes, open our ears, and open our hearts as we join together to praise and to worship you this morning. In your son's name we pray, amen. So if you're paying close attention today, you'll see a theme that rides throughout the songs, through the scripture, through the sermon. I hope I'm right on that. That... Uh, it speaks of God's steadfastness, how he stands with us even in the best times and the worst times. And we're going to start that theme with this song. It's an old song of the old hymn of the church that I grew up singing. I hope all of you know it. It's the solid rock, also known as my hope is built. So stand and sing this with us today. I think it's on page 368. If you like looking at the hymnal, the words will also be on the screens. Come with trumpet sound, oh may I 
be seated. They're coming. It's time for the children's moment. They're on their way, I believe. And all the kids in here, big and small, can lead the way. Hello everyone, it is time for the children's message. Bad things happen to us sometimes. Has something bad ever happened to any of you? Yeah? A lot of times we think 
why would Jesus let this happen to us if he loves us? And that's understandable. But today, Pastor Kaylee is preaching about a scripture that addresses this. Jesus told his friends and followers that when bad stuff happens, it's an opportunity to learn and tell people about God. Now, this doesn't mean that Jesus wants the bad stuff to happen to us. He's just saying that there's no way to, to avoid it, so we might as well make it into a good thing. So, next time that something bad happens to you or someone you know, try and use it to spread a little Jesus around. Now let's pray. Dear God, Dear God. bad things happen. Bad things, happen. Thanks, for being there for us. Thanks for being there for us. Help us to remember, us to, remember. To, share your love. to share your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's go.
Good morning. Please join me in an attitude of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, gracious God and Lord of Lords, once again you've blessed us with a beautiful day and an opportunity to grow closer to you. But at times our vision becomes blurred and we act in a way that is not pleasing to you. And yet you catch every tear we shed in your hand and you never stop forgiving us and loving us. We are, after all, a work in progress, and we will continue to strive to do better. When we see or hear or even experience disasters, and our question to you is, why do these things happen? We know it's okay to ask this or to be angry because at least we're still in communication with you. And Lord, on this special weekend, we celebrate Veterans Day, and we thank you for all the men and women who have chosen to give of themselves so that we may enjoy the freedoms that we have. We thank you for all the police, the firefighters, the first responders who protect us and aid us in everything we need. So Lord, today, we ask that you keep your loving arms and your healing hands upon us and upon all who are suffering, whether it's physical or emotional, those recovering from injury or illness or surgeries. We ask a special blessing for Pastor Kaylee. Please let her words be the words you want us to hear to better understand your words. And please, Lord, open our eyes, our ears, our minds and hearts to understand and grow in your faith. We all have things that are heavy on our hearts, Lord, and we know that you hear our prayers. So now, Lord, we pray together as a Christian community, saying the words that Jesus taught us to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. A little, a little later in the sermon, Pastor Kaylee's going to tell the story of this song. It's very moving, and I think it'll touch your hearts, but so it's fresh in your minds. Stand and sing this classic spiritual with me. Lord, lead me home. 
precious Lord, lead me home. Beautiful. You may be seated. As our ushers um, prepare to come and serve us today by um, taking up our tithes and our offerings, I want to remind you there are several ways that you can give, and you'll see those on the screen. Um, I just I also wanted to give you an update since we've had um, all of our fifth Sundays that we're going to have this year. Um, I, I wanted to give you an update on our offering that we have been able to give so far this year to the Florida United Methodist Children's Home. So far, we have raised $1,700. And nineteen dollars and forty one cents. So that is wonderful. And yay, thank you all for your generosity on that. Um, just to give you a, an S, a idea of where we fall, our goal every year, um, according to what our membership is currently, is uh, $2,196. So we're just about $400 short. So uh, th- I think this is great news, though. I, um, and so I think. We have the potential to be able to reach our goal this year. You can still give and mark an offering as being for the fifth Sunday. That's okay, even though it's not a fifth Sunday month and it's not the fifth Sunday. You can also bring any spare change that you find in your car, in your couch, whatever, and put it in the change bucket out here, and all of that counts toward that offering. So thank you so much for your generosity. Um, And just uh, looking forward, I'm going to let you know that in January, January 8th, um, Reverend Brian Ryan Carr from the Florida United Methodist Children's Home will be here preaching for us that Sunday in our service. So I look forward to hearing more about that, um, that ministry from him on that day. Let me pray for us. Oh God, we long to make a difference in our world. We offer you what we have, our visions and dreams our witness to your saving acts of love and justice, our resources to help bring the new heaven and the new earth into our midst. We offer you our very lives, that we may be co-workers with you to bring about true change. Amen. Morning. Morning. Scripture lesson today is taken from Luke chapter 21, verses 5 through 19. When some were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and the gifts dedicated God, he said, As for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left another. All will be thrown down. They ask him, Teacher, when will this be? And what will be the sign that this is about to take? And he said, Beware that you are not led astray. For many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified. For these things must take place first, but the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, Nations will rise against nations, and kingdoms against kingdoms. There will be great earthquakes, and in various places fountains and plagues. There will be dreadful potent portents and great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to the synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to justify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you words and wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You'll be betrayed even by parents and brothers by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. 
You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Roger, for reading our scripture this morning. And thank you, Mary, for your beautiful prayer. <clears throat> now, we've been journeying through Luke, really, for much of this year, but especially, in particular, these last two weeks. We met Zacchaeus, and we were challenged about the ways we see both ourselves and others as children of God. We met some Sadducees who were, in fact, sad, you see. Because they dared not ask Jesus any more questions after asking him a question in jest about the resurrection. In that story, we discovered yet again that Jesus sees differently. Just as he saw Zacchaeus as a son of Abraham, he saw the woman in their made-up story worthy of the resurrection. She is a daughter of Abraham. But he also saw the Sadducees. He knew what was important to them, what they were trying to do. But he answered them seriously. Jesus welcomes our questions. He doesn't think there are silly questions. He doesn't belittle or judge us for asking questions. Questions are not a sign of a lack of faith. Quite the opposite, in fact. Questions provide opportunities for our faith to grow, for our relationship with Jesus to deepen. While we might not get the answers we are hoping for, we do find Jesus there in the midst of the questions, faithful, sitting with us, loving us, never leaving us alone. Now this week, we find Jesus with the disciples. They are in Jerusalem still, near the temple. And the disciples are in awe over the place. Now, who wouldn't be? You could see from the picture that this place is magnificent and grand. I am sure no matter how many times they had seen it, it never lost its luster. They saw in this man-made structure a sense of God's blessing and presence among God's people. Jesus pops their bubble when he tells them that this building is not going to last forever. Like a child who knocks their building block tower over, the stones of this temple will be all thrown down. Jesus is warning them, to not put their trust in these man-made structures. God is not limited by them. God is not contained in them. God is not bound by mortar and stone. Now, of course, this shocks them, and they want to know when it will happen. What will be the sign? The human condition hasn't changed much over the last several thousand years, has it? We still want to know what is to come. We still want to know what are the signs as to what is coming. Jesus' answer isn't really the answer they are looking for. He tells them not to be led astray. Don't get distracted. Well, easy for him to say. But as for the rest of us, the disciples included, it is way too easy for us <laughs> to lose our focus. Like Doug the dog in the movie Up, right? Squirrel! And suddenly, we've turned our eyes from Jesus and looked to something else. Like the grandeur of the temple. Or trying to figure out when it's going to be destroyed. Now, as if they don't have enough to distract them, Jesus goes on to tell them some things that they can expect to happen. Wars, earthquakes, famines, and plagues, signs and wonders, their own arrests and persecutions. Now, I don't know about you, but if someone told me that was going to happen to me, 
especially someone like Jesus, I think I'd be a bit preoccupied. Distracted, maybe, trying to figure out, when is this going to happen? And knowing what we know of these disciples, I wouldn't be surprised one bit if they did fixate on this information. What I also know, though, is that they did exactly what he told them to in verse 9. In verse 9, he says this, meaning their arrests and persecutions and being brought before kings and governors because of Jesus. This will give you an opportunity to testify. He goes on to tell them not to worry about preparing their defense in advance, but to trust that he, in the moment, Jesus would give them the words and the wisdom that they would need. Now, I know they did this because we have the stories of them doing it. I think especially of Peter over in the book of Acts, the second volume written by Luke. We hear how Peter stood up and preached a sermon on the day of Pentecost. That's the day that the Holy Spirit came and filled the place where the disciples were gathered. And I don't believe Peter had rehearsed that sermon. I don't think he had prepared and studied for that moment. I think too of Stephen, the first martyr, who was stoned to death because of his belief in Jesus. He also basically preached a sermon right before they stoned him. And I doubt very much he had rehearsed beforehand. You see, what Luke has written for us here in his gospel testifies to the truthfulness of Jesus' words. Everything Jesus tells the disciples is going to happen, we know on this side of history, actually happened. The temple was destroyed in, in the year 70. Just before that, there was a Jewish revolt that brutally crushed, the, at the time, the Roman general who would eventually become the Roman emperor. That revolt is what led to the destruction of the temple. And we also know that between Jesus' resurrection and the destruction of that temple, the disciples did, in fact, suffer persecution, especially under the emperor Nero. As readers on this side of history... We learn from Luke that Jesus' word can be trusted. The world around us might fall apart. Wars, earthquakes, persecutions, even betrayal by our own family and friends. But Jesus' word is true. Like Isaiah says in chapter 40, verse 8, The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of the Lord endures forever. So we can trust Jesus. Now here in these verses, Jesus wanted to prepare his followers to stand firm when the world was falling apart. He wanted to remind them to stay focused, to not get distracted, to remember their reason for being. So he reveals to them what is coming. More importantly, he reveals to them their purpose what they are to do, and even who they are. They are to testify. They are to tell others about their reason for hope. They are to be witnesses to all of what Jesus has done, and then tell others about him. In this way, this text today, these words from Jesus to his disciples is an apocalyptic vision. Now, apocalypse is not a word that means end times. It actually means revelation. Something is revealed or unveiled. It's a disclosure of something secret or hidden. Jesus reveals to them what is coming and what they are to do. He reveals to them that God is present even when the world is falling apart. Because God is present in each of them, giving them the words and the wisdom they need in the moment. The same is true for us. It might feel a bit like our world is falling apart. We've had a pandemic, turmoil in our own nation, wars in other nations, 
unprecedented natural disasters around the world, distress within our own denomination, and then a hurricane. Feels a little like the world is falling apart. But what is it that's being revealed to us in the midst of disaster? Our resilience, our strength in the midst of adversity, our endurance, our ability to build community in ways we didn't expect, our healing in ways that defy logic, our human capacity to love, to have grace. God's faithfulness is also being revealed. Our reason for hope in the midst of suffering. Just like those disciples thousands of years ago, we have an opportunity to testify. We have an opportunity to be witnesses, to offer hope. Just as those dramatic historical events set the stage for the great drama of speaking God's truth for the disciples, so the dramatic events of our day set the stage for us to speak God's truth. Now, earlier in the service, we sang that hymn, Precious Lord. And as Vince said, I did run across the story um, of how that song came to be this week. I'm going to share it with you. Precious Lord is written by Thomas Dorsey. Thomas Dorsey, born in 1889 in rural Georgia, was a prolific songwriter and an excellent gospel and blues musician. While a young man, Dorsey moved to Chicago and found work as a piano player in the churches as well as in clubs and playing in theater. Struggling to support his family, Dorsey divided his time between playing in the clubs and playing in the church. After some time of turbulence, Dorsey devoted his artistry exclusively to the church. In August of 1932, Dorsey left his pregnant wife in Chicago and traveled to be the featured soloist at a large revival meeting in St. Louis. After the first night of the revival, Dorsey received a telegram that simply said, Your wife just died. Dorsey raced home and learned that his wife had given birth to a son before dying in childbirth. The next day, his son died as well. Dorsey buried his wife and son in the same casket and withdrew in sorrow and agony from his family and friends. He refused to compose or play, mu- play any music for quite some time. While still in the midst of despair, Dorsey said that as he sat in front of a piano, a feeling of peace washed through him. He heard a melody in his head that he had never heard before and began to play it on the piano. That night, Dorsey recorded this testimony while in the midst of suffering. Precious Lord, take my hand. Lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the night, through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. What was revealed to Dorsey was God's presence with him during a time of immense suffering and loss. And he testified about it through that song. Friends, our world, our island, needs to hear our testimonies. We have an opportunity to testify because our world needs Jesus. Our world needs hope. Our world needs peace. Our world needs healing. We don't need to worry about what to say. We don't need to rehearse and have a plan. We have the promise from Jesus that he will be with us. He will give us the words and the wisdom. He is faithful. We don't need all of the answers. We offer what we know. We offer love. We offer kindness. We offer grace. We offer hope. And in this way, we are witnesses to the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. 
And we live out our mission to reach people with God's love, transform lives, and change the world. Will you pray with me? Jesus, you didn't promise the disciples a world without problems. You don't promise that to us either. What you promise is that you will be with us even when the world is falling apart. You reveal to us your presence. You reveal to us our resilience and our strength. And you call us to testify to these things. To offer the world hope and love and healing. To offer them you. May we live our lives as your witnesses, revealing you to the world. Amen. A couple of weeks ago, I introduced you to this song. Pastor Kaylee, as she was finishing her message this week, asked if I would bring it back because she felt it would help drive home what God was saying through today's scripture. I'll sing the verses to remind you, but if you, if you remember the chorus, join me there. When our homes are hit by heartbreak, let your presence be. When the pain seems overwhelming, we hold on to you. When the streets are torn by chaos, we will be your hands and feet. When the darkness brings division, Jesus. So this week, 
as you live out your life. Testify. Give your testimony. Be a witness to Jesus alive in our world. Amen. Stand with me and let's do it. Sing that chorus one more time. And we know Have a great week. We'll see you next week. Go in peace.